Welcome to the Cross Rifles, where today we do a graffiti AR-15 build. So this project started off when a uh, good customer of ours that we've done several uh, custom builds for um, brought in an AR-15 and 350 Legend and said he wanted a graffiti gun. Of course, immediately I said, sure, we can do that, uh, having no idea how I was going to accomplish it. So this is a picture of my design file for this job. Um, I just tried different fonts, different things. Uh, threw up an AR template and started throwing stuff at it and, and seeing what I liked and what I didn't like. Uh, this is the end file, what I come up with, and then this is the uh, masking file that I used, took to the vinyl cutter um, to cut all my different masking for this. So I had no colors picked out or anything, but I liked the design, and so we started uh, started the laser work on this. This is the small 350 and SH on the right side of the receiver. SH are the customer's initials. Thought that would be cool to get a graffiti set of his initials on there. And then here's a large 350 on the on the left side of the receiver that pretty much dominates that whole side. About a month after we started this and right after right before uh we were picking out final colors for this job, uh I decided to put a brick pattern behind the graffiti on this gun and this is me figuring out how to do that so I, I tried a couple different colors on a couple different um, flashing shingles and I got the laser all dialed in here here is our color palette for this gun uh, it's pretty huge uh, I threw that sample out there for the brick pattern and we just started matching colors together Luke really helped me out on this uh, it's just a sounding board and giving me his opinions on what went with what. It was a lot of help. So I took my notes from uh, our conversation and came up with this kind of workflow here to try and keep it straight in the booth. I ended up screwing it up anyways, but it came out in the end. So here we are in the booth. Um, this is high vis orange. If you want quantities I mixed or anything like that, you can take a look at that document I threw up there. It has all the quantities on it. Um, yeah, so I separated all the small parts onto several racks and then labeled that rack what color uh, I was going to spray that. Kind of grouped all the parts together depending on what they were getting and when. And uh, just started working my way down the list. I tried to do as much as possible every time I had something out of the oven. So here I'm hitting just one little letter, the three on that 350. Uh, real careful, got the gun dialed back. And then here in a second, you'll see I get the zero on that 350 with an entirely different color. Um, this is where that list comes in. It just really helps me keep track of where I'm at and not miss... Uh, spraying apart and having to mix up more Cerakote to um, to pick that up later. Part of the reason that developing your design file on top of an accurate template is so you can do this later. Uh, so things go back and forth between the laser and the vinyl cutter and they're exactly to scale. So I use that vinyl cutter to cut out masking for letters and things that are more complicated to mask and then I just use regular tape on the easy stuff. So we're out of the oven, masked off, back in the booth, spraying another little color. Uh, this one's green. It's in the middle of that 350. It's the 5. And here we are with another mask that was cut on the vinyl cutter. And this covers that entire 350. Um, it's easier to lay down and keep down than individuals. Uh, here's the masking on that SH. I do have a little leeway on these uh, on these masking stickers because there's a color fill that goes around the outside of all those letters, so I don't have to be 100% accurate. All right, so back in the booth, this is Periwinkle. 
Uh, it goes on a, a few of the small parts and then uh, most of the receiver. It's getting a gradient on the 350, the big 350 on the left side. And then there's a splat that's going on this right side that's in periwinkle. So uh, a lot of the small parts and receivers, there's that splat after it came out of the oven. A lot of the small parts and the majority of the receiver got this periwinkle. I'm going to adjust this sticker as I see fit. It's just a paint splat, so it doesn't have to be exact anywhere. I can kind of adjust it and then add to it as, uh, as I think it looks good. And here we are getting small parts and some big parts in red. The red is the color of the bricks in the brick pattern. So uh, the hand guard, I just shot the whole hand guard in red and the grip, uh, magazine, and the receivers. And we'll see if you see where I screw up here. Uh, I've got a really nice set of decals on that side or masking on that side of the receiver. And then uh, right here, I had a bunch of people talking to me today. Right here, I screwed up. See where it says sticker splat? 350s sh and 97 well i didn't get the big 350 on the left side of that receiver and i sprayed red right over it here's the 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 fix for that i ended up having to tape this off sandblast it and repaint it awesome all because i forgot one sticker and we're back in the booth just hitting some small stuff here Again, back to that list, it helped me keep everything straight. Uh, after I got a color mixed up, I could check my list and make sure that I had every part on there. Um, I had every part on that list sprayed, whatever color it needed to be. And back in the booth, we're spraying silver on top of everything that gets that brick pattern. Uh, and at this point, I still hadn't realized that uh, I screwed up that 350 on on the side of the receiver uh, i didn't realize that until it was actually in the laser they were just uh putting some numbers on the side some graffiti style numbers and and so that's gonna keep that periwinkle around the outside and then we're gonna fill it in with another color in the middle and then do an oval around the outside with a third color Now we're moving on to the laser with all these uh, brick pattern parts. They still have all the masking on them um, to protect them from the laser. And we're using our settings that we developed on that shim shingle earlier. Yeah, we're not going to experiment on the customer's parts to figure out what our settings need to be. We're, we'll do that ahead of time and then um, head into the job knowing that our settings are right. I wanted the legend on this grip to be black anyways, so I just lasered through the Cerakote to the polymer. And here we're taping up the things that we want to stay brick colored so we can lay some white and speckles over the rest of this gun. Here I'm fading the white onto this hand guard. I want the, the portion up by the receivers to stay this brick color. And I'm just kind of being careful laying it in and then getting a good solid coat. Uh, and then we're going to spray the rest of the parts white and then go through with like eight colors and put speckles all over everything. Sorry about the single camera angle here. I had an SD card take a shit on me. So it's speckle times. Um, this was the following day uh, after everything had been tacked out and I came back in so uh, I, I mixed up just a few mils of each one of those colors that I used before and got the guns dialed in for a good speckle and then just went along and hit everything three colors at a time. Well I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this gun it was pretty cool. Uh, if you did hit that subscribe button give us a like Give us a comment, look us up on Facebook, all that kind of fun stuff. Share it with your friends. Get involved in the community. Let's all help each other make badass projects. Till next time, have a good one.
know what? <laughs> Speaking of 